This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight. I just told uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, yes, that in fact is the guy's name. Uh, but I, I told Larry Bubbles Brown, hey, Larry, uh, if I fall asleep during this, just yell at me and wake me up, okay? <laughs> last night I couldn't get to sleep uh, and... Uh, all I can think of is that old song that started out, I couldn't sleep at all last night, just thinking of you. Uh, but no, I, I, you know, it's one of these kind of things, you know, where you have a problem just before you go into bed. In my case, it was that Skype wasn't working, and I couldn't sign back onto it because I forgot all my passwords. And wow. In fact, I, uh, in fact, how I call you here is using Skype, right? But it's another mm -hmm. account, so I can sign on to it, okay. But uh, I couldn't, I, I changed the password, and then I tried to sign on with the password that I changed, and it wouldn't let me sign back on. So then I tried to give it another password, and, it, 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 and then when I tried enough passwords that didn't work, it locked me out for 24 hours. And that drove me nuts because we use that other account for the other programs that I have on so they can talk to people. And it just, so now you lie there in bed and your brain is just buzzing. Yeah. This always happens before I go to sleep. And, and so your head is buzzing. And so to stop the buzzing, I went, well, I don't want to take my normal pill that puts me to sleep which is a, a neuropathy drug. So I figure, what the hell, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take a Xanax. And I take a Xanax, and I'm still not falling asleep because my mind is still buzzing. So I take another uh, quarter of a Xanax, and I'm, that, that knocks me out. That puts me to sleep. And when I wake up, I'm, I'm, I'm barely, com I, I'm comatose. In fact, right now I'm comatose. <laughs> Talking to you wakes me up. Okay. I'll wake you up. We'll see how sharp. I saw, I saw three trivia questions last night. We can see how sharp you are. Well, let, let, let's see if I'm if I'm sharp with the trivia questions. But before we get to them, so I you, you can't get to sleep because your mind is buzzing, you know. And I'm sick of this because. Every night before I go to sleep, something else goes wrong technologically. And it always happens late at night because that's when I use the equipment the most. And, I, and now I'm locked out of that Skype account so none of my other programs can call. Can that lockout is the worst. <laughs> yeah. So I'm locked out for 24 hours, it says. But I don't know. But... So I'm locked out at Skype. There's nobody to call at Skype to say, unlock me. Flip the switch. You know. Get a human on there to talk to you. Yeah. Occasionally when I have companies where I do get to talk to a human being, I'm I'm kind of amazed, you know, that I'm able to do that. But, ah, God, who knows? It could be worse. I read a few months ago there was some guy that had a million of dollars on a bitcoin and he'd lost his password and he would tried nine different times and still hadn't gotten it and if he tries one more he loses it forever loses all his bitcoin it's worth yeah, millions now i'm not even going to start with this one with you do you understand bitcoin i don't i have no idea how that would possibly work and, and that's the, the, a mitzvah for us because we don't have to lose our pit Bitcoin <laughs> uh, password, okay? 
Oh man, oh man! And there's nobody you can call. No, there's nobody you can call to get you know. To, okay, you want a new one? Okay, here, type this in, and uh, there you go. You got your Bitcoin now. I'm yeah, sure he was one more able, chance, or he's done. Well, I'm sure he was able to get a hold of his Bitcoin number somehow. You know, I but I don't know how Bitcoin works. And uh, is there a B- Bitcoin ATM? Do you go to the ATM and say, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I just don't understand it. And people are losing money like crazy on Bitcoin now. Yeah, I think it's down quite a bit. Oh, it's down enormously, you know. And I'm and I'm happy because, I, fuck you, you know, you really thought you were so smart. Oh, we're going to go to a digital currency. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but I, it, that's one place you and I are on a parody with each other, Larry. <laughs> you don't understand Bitcoin. I don't understand Bitcoin. And I, I don't understand how it works. I really don't. No concept. Yeah, we should learn. It seems that yeah, people no, are really why, into why, it. Why? Forget it. Don't even learn. Don't even learn because then you might want to try it. Right, yeah. You know. Uh, and I, listen, I understand that people would like to change the monetary system. I mean, we're on a gold standard, I think. Aren't we still on a gold standard? No, we're off the gold standard. I think that was the problem. I think Nixon took us off. Oh, okay. And people say, you know, we have this great national this national debt, okay? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And you say, well, why doesn't it matter? Because... If the debt gets too bad, we just print more money. That's it. Good, plain and simple. The national debt does not affect you in any way, shape, or form. And isn't there a, a debt and there's a deficit or something? I don't know. There's a difference between the two. The what? The debt is the the debt is the accumulated amount that we owe. The deficit is the yearly. I see. Like. Like we 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 lose we spend probably four hundred billion more than we took in last year, so that's a that's the deficit, and the national debt is the accumulation of that since the start of the country. So let me get this straight: you understand that, yeah, but you don't understand Bitcoin. I don't know. No. But anyway, I mean, I I could see that people want a different standard upon which to you know to trade money and so on. But Bitcoin, there's nobody regulating it. Exactly, yeah. You know, at least with our our normal money, there's somebody regulating it. And and uh, so I feel kind of safe with that, shall we say? You know? Yes, that's the Federal Reserve, which is very murky, and no one understands that either. Yeah, well, but at least it's something. You know? Yeah. But, I mean, I understand the desire for a different system. Hey, we've had this system all along now. Let's do something about it. Let's uh, let's um, uh, find a new way of doing it that's better and more modern and so on. And I can see that. But this doesn't seem to be the answer. So, yeah. Well, we're not into it, so we, we're not going to be affected by it. I guess. I guess we're not going to. I hope we're not going to be affected by it. We'll we'll be poor no matter what system we choose. Yeah. yeah. So are you a wealthy man? Uh, <laughs> Hardly. I was. I did buy. Uh, I did buy three lottery tickets last week, hoping to get a billion. But uh, somebody won it. it. Yeah. Well, you know, you could buy just one ticket and be the billionaire. You know. Yeah. Um, I thought about going out and buying them too, but eh, come on, what, what are the chances? You know, some company bought fifty thousand tickets. They didn't win. Okay, so. so what would be if you, if you could buy thousands of them and you haven't upped your chances? Yeah, you know, the know? odds of the winning that were three hundred and some million to one. Yeah, or maybe more than that. Yeah, but so it's like uh, that's a lot. That's how many people there are in the United States. And and usually it's like five people suddenly win. So you got to mm-hmm. spread that money out over five people. One guy won this. One guy won, yeah. 
So okay, so now how much was it? One point two billion or something? One point two billion, but they said the, if you that's if you take it spread over twenty years, but if you take a full ca a cash amount, it's like seven hundred million. Oh gee, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so let's say you got seven hundred million now, tax free. All right. What would you do with it? Well, being a minimalist, there's not a lot I would. <laughs> there's not a lot of things I want. I would get a nice house. Yeah. Okay. I would uh, give you and uh, close friends a significant amount of money. Oh, really? Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm on your list, are you? Yeah, on the list, yes. Okay. I never forget, uh, I'm always loyal to people that have put money in my pocket, so I never forget that. And you gave me work. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. That would be very nice if you, uh, yeah. how much would I get, by the way? You get a few mil. If I had that much, yeah. A few mil? Okay, fine. That would take care of me for the rest of my life. Yeah, you know. take care of everybody. And yeah, but now now you've still got $725 million. I'll probably give a... I might open up a comedy club. Who knows? Okay, that'll lead up most of it. Have to, yes, have somebody else run it. I wouldn't want to be part of it. <laughs> I give a lot of money to help animals, too. So. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so now you've got uh, $710 million. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's hard to get rid of. You remember there was a movie called Brewster's Millions? And it was about, I never saw it, but I remember that title. Uh, yeah, well, the, the, the premise of the movie was this guy... Is given in those days. I mean, it was a lot of money, a million dollars. But he he uh, and he had to spend it all, but not on himself. And um, I think he couldn't give it away to charity either. I mean, uh, there was some caveat, and they had to figure out a way that he could try and give away, get, you know, spend a million dollars, and not have to uh, pay for it. You know, I, mean, I I seem to vaguely remember that, and they remade it with uh, uh, Richard Pryor. So I gotta see that. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, do you remember a show, a uh, old old TV show called The Millionaire? Right. Where every week he would give this guy a million, a, he'd give somebody a cashier's check for a million dollars. Right. And, and then the adventure would be what he did with a million dollars or how it right. ruined him or yeah. whatever. Do then you, SCTV did a parody of that show called <laughs> After 30 Years, the guy that was giving a million dollars away, his checks were all bouncing because he giving it away every week. <laughs> Do you remember? Now, here, here's a trivia question for you. And I bet you don't remember the answer to this one, but I do. What was the name of the millionaire? Not the guy who gave away the money. That was his. Uh, that was his. Uh, a guy who worked for him, but the guy who actually was the philanthropist who gave away the money. I, was it John Beresford Tipton? You got it. Wow. You got it. His name was John Beresford Tipton. Yeah. And, uh, and who was the guy that the, the guy that gave the check away was a, I forget the actor's name. His name was Marvin Miller. Marvin Miller. Now I'm I'm in a, a, a slightly adulterated state right now because I didn't get much sleep last night. Do you remember that? And then to go to sleep, I had to take pills to do it. How can I remember John Beresford Tipton and Marvin Miller? How, how did that just come out of the top wow, of my head yeah. without me even thinking twice or even pausing? That is amazing the way the brain works. I like that. Very selective memory, and yet I can't remember. You know, I'm wa We're watching TV, and we go, isn't that that guy who was in that thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, that's Robert De Niro. You know, I mean, you, you it, 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 I can't remember stuff that I should remember and then the stuff like that just, you know, yeah. yeah. Tom Bearsford Same here. And Marvin Miller. You know. Uh, Which uh, was also the name of the lawyer that made all the baseball players rich. 
Marvin Miller? Marvin Miller, yeah. Or John Beresford Tipton. Um, John Beresford Tipton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, the things we remember. Okay, you had some trivia questions for me. I had some trivia questions. Okay, the because uh, you know movies. Mm-hmm. The What was the first color picture to win an Oscar? Oh, the first color picture to win an Oscar. Well, it wasn't Becky Sharp, which was the first three-color Technicolor movie. Um, the first color movie to win an Oscar. God, that that um, that's um, wasn't for whom the bell tolls. That didn't win an Academy Award. Uh, God, uh, I gone with the wind. You're right. Okay, you're a genius. Okay, the uh, the, <laughs> the only person to win an Oscar whose name was Oscar. <laughs> oh. Oscar Homolka? Good, 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 good guess. But uh, 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 Oscar, uh, oh, uh, Oscar Isaac? No. Uh, it was for music. Oh, really? And now he, no, wait a minute, he he won it, it being as for best actor. Not asking for for music up. Uh, production. Oh, I see. You didn't say that. Okay. Oscar for music. Well, uh, no, it wouldn't be Oscar Hammerstein. That's it. It is. Really? See, you're, even on Xanax, you're, you're, you're knocking these down. <laughs> wait a minute. What did he win it for? I forget which movie it was, but it was, I think it was a score. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next question. Last one. The youngest person to ever win uh, an actor. The youngest actor to win an Oscar. Youngest actor ever to win an Oscar. Was it a kid? Ten years old. He won an Oscar for best actor or best won supporting? A, for an, 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 probably supporting. Probably supporting actor. Um... Wasn't Dean Stockwell? Wasn't oh God! Oh my! Bobby Driscoll? No. Wasn't the guy? Well, it wasn't a guy. No. It wasn't Shirley Temple because she never won no. an Oscar. And this was an Oscar for what? Um. Uh, Best supporting actress, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Oh, God. I should know this one. I should know this one. Uh, I'm just trying to think of all the young kids who may have won an Oscar. Uh, I give up. Who was it? Tatum O'Neill. You're right. You're absolutely right. Son of a bitch. Well. It was, uh... So a child actor never has a career as an adult actor, do they? <laughs> not really. Not really. Uh, she was great in that film. Yeah. yeah. She certainly deserved it. But and She was hot when she grew up. Yeah, she was okay, you know. Uh, she and her father didn't get along that well. But, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, but uh, they worked well together. You know, and I imagine that playing with your father kind of works out okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a trivia question I could ask you. You know, there used to be, you know, my best trivia question that anybody ever asked me, and this was back in the day, okay? This was back when I was doing eh, Live 105. And the question was, uh, can you name people who won Academy Awards for Best Actor or Best Actress who then went on to have TV shows? And, oh, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, but today, that would not be a major question because a lot of people started out in TV and went into movies. In those days, if you did movies, you didn't do TV. Oh, you looked down on TV, 
you know, but there were some, like, for instance, the obvious ones were Broderick Crawford. People go, you mean the guy from Highway Patrol? Highway Patrol. He won Academy Award for Best Actor, playing Willie Stark in, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of them, All the King's Men. All the King's Men. Um, and another one was Ernest Borgnine. For Marty. For Marty, yeah. And then he wound up doing Mikhail's Navy. Right, yeah. Yeah. But there were a few others. I think uh, Jimmy Stewart wound up having a TV show. And I think he won an Academy Award at some point. Oh, he had to, but I can't... What was the TV show? The TV show was... Uh, I, I think it was called The Jimmy Stewart Show. I can't remember exactly. Um, uh, I think... Uh, what, did Ray Milland ever win an Academy Award? He had a TV series called... Are you ready for this? I know these... How do I know this crap? He did a show, Ray Milan, called Mr. McNutley. I don't remember that one. Which was about a teacher at an Ivy League college. Which, in the second season, they changed the name to Mr. McNulty. That's better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can name one. Uh, George C. Scott. George C. Scott. But, but he, the difference was, he won an Academy Award after he had done TV. Oh, after, yeah. He had done a show called, how do I know this? East Side, West Side. Yeah, it didn't last very long. No, but it was a great show. And who was the female on that show? Uh, I do not remember. Cicely Tyson. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. How do I remember these things, folks? It's because I have no life. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's amazing that I remember this stuff. I'm sitting here. In, I'm groggy today, folks. Uh, you know, because of my and medicine. yeah, you remember all that. And I'm this stuff is just wafting over me in my head. You know, um, but uh, let's see here. Oh, um, you know, I, what I what I love is people who get really old. Like, do you know that Norman Lear just celebrated his 100th birthday? Wow. 100 years. Uh, and uh, Olivia de Havilland died a while back. She was 104, I think. Jesus. And, uh, and, and because of my union, probably didn't have insurance. Yeah, uh, thanks, Sag. <laughs> Sag after a union insurance thing, which used like, to be good. And the, here's the guy who was the oldest one that we had in AFTRA, who of course wasn't getting insurance either at the end of his life. Uh, was Norman Lloyd? Norman 107? Lloyd, huh? Hundred seven, right? Hundred and seven. And what do we remember him most for? Uh, you told me it's a Hitchcock movie, was it? The the, yeah, um, Saboteur. Saboteur. He's the guy that falls off the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and uh, then later on, he went on to be the producer for Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And he also appeared on, I think, several TV shows, medical TV shows, like I, maybe Saint Elsewhere. I mean, maybe I remember him in that. Uh, but uh, 107 years old, and no insurance, and no insurance. <laughs> so you know. Don't forget Adolf Zucker. How old was Adolf Zucker? He lived 103. Really? Wow. Adolf. I think Zucker. he was. He was just a producer, right? Well, no, he was also, I think, one of the uh, people who started Paramount Pictures. Oh, okay. With uh, Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, I think he was Paramount Pictures, if I'm not terribly mistaken. So, well, you're usually right in these matters. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. I, I hate to say I am right, and that this is the only stuff I can remember. 
<laughs> you know, I can't remember when dinner is tonight. Yeah, and I can't remember my. We can, we can never remember important things, you and I. But we right. can. Uh, Are you getting hard with names now? Uh, I've always been bad on names, and now it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm terrible with names. But anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time, and I went through two of these. Even though you were on the Xanax, you got through it. Yeah, I, I, did I sound l lucid? You did, yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I love lucid. Anyway. I love lucid, a new sitcom. <laughs> a new sitcom. Anyway, Remember, on. Xanax spelled backwards is Xanax. It, it is, isn't it? I didn't think about that. Anyway, hey, thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk to him next week. Bye, Larry. We'll be lucid next time. Okay, bye. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Thank you very much, Larry Brown. We appreciate it very much. And we'll talk to him again next week, I guess. You know. Ah, hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get my audio a little louder tonight. Um, because I, uh, I, I have a tendency to run my mic a little bit low, and uh, that, uh, that's not good. That's not good. Let me see here. We have a bunch of people waiting to come on tonight, and we will, uh, we will, uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. Uh, participants. Oh, there are a whole bunch of them waiting. Here we go. Here we go. Let's admit them all now, and let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Uh, there we go. We watch them all pop in. There we go. There we go. They're all popping in. Oh, yeah. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? You run my Michael. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, Jeff. I'm off. Oh, okay. He did it. He, did, he took care of it. Okay, fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Anyway, uh, how you all doing tonight? Good. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm dry. Yeah, what we're gonna do is something a little special later tonight, and it, oh, look who's look who's joining us, son of a bitch. Oh my goodness, I was just thinking I missed Rob. Oh, hello, Rob. How are you? <laughs> Wait a minute, you didn't. Can we hear you? No. Nah, there, there we go. There we go. Oh, and and to what to what do we? Uh, um, I can't, I can't even say stuff anymore. <laughs> to what, what do we uh, have this happening from you? What the hey, oh, this pleasure. Well, oh, this I, I, I don't, I know I'm not worried anymore about things politically correct and all that because I've retired. Uh, have you really? Okay. Oh, good, great. Okay. I, as of about three weeks ago, retired. Well, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let me just mention that uh, after this hour what we're going to do is we're going to take about five minutes off and then we're going to come back and we're going to have josh host a show oh tonight. really yeah oh yeah so that uh, because we, we got nothing you know so he may as well do it but anyway how you doing rob so, doing okay just so you know uh, uh lots of changes no longer living in virginia where are you Wow. Right now, I'm in New York. I'm staying <laughs> in my nice. brother's house. We are selling everything, and we're moving to the Philippines. Oh, jeez. Well, they do have Zoom over there, so uh, you could call yeah. the show. You're moving yeah. to the Philippines. Yeah, retiring and uh, going to retire there. Okay, now now what uh, what happened? You just got the job. Can you get the job? You hated the I job. Started a new job in January. Absolutely despised it. Yeah. Um, and I decided that um, it was time to retire. Yeah. How old are you now? Sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Welcome to retirement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Enjoy it while you can. That's right. You know. That's right. You don't mind living under Duarte or whatever his name is. He's gone. Is he gone? <laughs> He's gone. Yeah, who's but I thought his son won the thing, so he's just the same, isn't he? No, he's not his son. It's oh. um, uh, uh, it's Aquino's or one of the. It's a family member of somebody who was president a while ago. 
Oh, okay. Your wife is Filipino, isn't she? Yeah, that's where yeah. we're going. Yeah. Right now, right now, there's a, a 40 foot container somewhere between here and the Philippines with all of our belongings in it. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So you're very serious on that, and you sold the house. It's in it's in under contract right now. We moved, we we came here the other day. Um, we we left Virginia about four days ago, and um, we're going to stay here. I'll be here until probably late October. Okay. Uh, and then um, I'll I'll fly out. Are you, are you taking all your studio equipment with you? Everything's on the right now. Everything's on the. Uh, okay, so if I need you to do voice stuff, you can do it from the Philippines. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a big move. Um, if I had stayed here and retired, my wife's a lot younger than me, and I can't afford to pay her medical benefits, so wow. she'd have to work. Um, and then I'd be sitting home every day, and she'd be working. Oh, okay. What kind of life is that in retirement, right? So this way, um, we're going to build a house. and um, Okay, but who's going to take care of her medical benefits in, in the Philippines? Is she covered there? Well, she's, uh, they have a, a, a public program called PhilHealth, which she'll sign up for. And for me, I'll be on an international medical plan, which will cost me about 3500 bucks a year. And it, it's good in every country but the USA. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know something. I wonder why that is. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to have anything to do with a company named Phil Health. <laughs> right. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it's. Um, I'm gonna, I, the radio station is off right now. What happened was, you know, it's kind of almost like, um, it's almost like kismet what happened. Just prior to me resigning, the, the, the radio station suffered a, um, uh, a problem with the, with the PC and I have to replace it. And I really just, with the job and everything else, I didn't have the, the mindset. I was I'm exhausted. I was, frazzled the job just i hated it and so when it went off the air i uh i said okay it's time to move it's time to move on that was the one thing that was keeping me here i didn't want to put i didn't want to interrupt the station and take it down and all that but i've decided that i mean i'm just going to be rebuilt and it's going back on the air it's just um uh I'm, I'm, i think i'm going to even do it in the cloud temporarily yeah uh, but uh yeah, so it'll go back online once once I get a little bit settled there. I have to, I don't know what happened, but I didn't even have time to mess with it, but I couldn't, it, the, the PC screwed up, and um, I have to, I'm gonna get a new PC for it, and then I have to transfer all kinds of stuff. There's a database on the old, there's a lot of work that has to be done to get it back online. Yeah. So once, I mean, I'm tired, now I can do whatever the hell I want. Just get it set up so you can do voiceovers. You know, because <laughs> we need your voice on GabNet. And if I join GabNet now, it'll be eleven o'clock in the morning more time. Yeah, oh, uh, it's, that's great. So you got you'll have something to do. Yeah, after I watch the Yankee games, <laughs> yeah. the Yankee games start at seven o'clock in the morning. Now, uh, yeah. Now, how do you get the Yankee games over there? MLB package. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They, MLB package. They have an MLB package over there. Sure. Well, I'm Absolutely. sure you wouldn't move to move there unless you could get it. That's right. My baseball games is what I live for. So, are, are you are you doing this more for the wife than for yourself, or do you do you like the Philippines? I mean, I'm doing it for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, chiefly amongst them, amongst them is is really just thinking about what life would be like if my wife had to work 40 hours a week and I was sitting home. Um, but second to that is that my life over there will be much richer mm -hmm. because my money will go a lot further. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to build a custom home. Uh, I can travel. I could do whatever. I, I you know, I, I want to go to Italy. I want to see more of Southeast Asia. Um, there are a ton of American expats living in the Philippines. 
Yeah. I, there's a ton of vloggers out there on YouTube, and I've been following them now for about eight months. And I've seen the kind of homes they've built. I've seen the kind of money it costs to live there. And it's very reasonable. And so I thought, you know what? I don't have a wife with a big pension. Yeah. I don't have a wife who's going to get Social Security. I don't have a wife who ha who's my age to retire. So she's got her Medicare and, uh, like I do. Mm -hmm. um, strike one, strike two, strike three. I can struggle here or I can go there and just live live a very different right. adventure in the final phase of life. Of course, you're going to have to make a whole new set of friends and associates and things like and that. I, yeah, I mean, a ton of family over there. My wife's family is all over there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really so, want to hang out with family? <laughs> now we'll meet we'll we'll make new friends over there. Like I said, there's a ton of expats who live there. Yeah. It's becoming a very popular thing to do. Uh to, to leave here, go to places like the Philippines, Mexico. Um, lots, um yes. People are leaving uh um, as they retire, you know, they want more out of life than you can get here. Now, let me so, ask you this, though. How, what about citizenship over there? I mean, what uh, do you have to get a green card? I mean, what, how are you going to? So I'll get one year. I, I get a one year visa because my wife is a, uh, a citizen. Mm -hmm. So when we fly in together, I get a one year visa stamped on my passport. And then I'll apply for a, a 13A visa, which is it's it gets renewed every so often. But it's sort of like a green card here. Yeah. I can cut low as I please. Good. Good. And how are the, how are the politics over there? Is it a, it, politics is something that's a no no for for foreigners. They don't want you involved in their politics. Um, but uh, so and and I, I could care less about. I mean, I, I could count on since I've been on GabNet, I can count the times on one hand that I've watched news and paid attention to things. It just so I don't really care. You know, yeah. the world is going to shit in the handbasket and. You know, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I can't. I can't. I could affect where I live. I could affect my life, but I can't affect those things. So who cares? Right. Right. So you know, it's, it's good. I'm happy for you. I'm Thank you. Yeah. For you. It'll be. It'll be. Uh, it'll be a, a definitely an adventure. And um, it'll all start in about a little less than two months from now. I think about the time that we'll be ready to. To, you know, my wife's leaving tomorrow to go because she's got to meet the container down there. Yeah, she'll be there for about a month or five weeks, um, and uh, and uh, find us a place to live temporarily while we're building a home, mm -hmm. and uh, and then she'll come back here, and then we have to get our cats ready. It's got a whole rigmarole to get our cats over there. They've got to be all kinds of stuff has to be done in order to get them there. So once that's done, we'll leave. Wow, wow! Well, no. uh, I'm I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I should have done that years ago. Where would you have gone? I don't know. <laughs> you know, but certainly not here. <laughs> not here. This is not a yeah. this is not a pretty place. You know. Yeah. Well, the world isn't a pretty place anymore. I'm doing this specifically because. Um, you know, just really because of, um, I mean, the world isn't a pretty place. I don't care where you are today, right? But I'm doing this mostly because it's going to give you the best chance at, a, at the best life. Yeah. In more than anything else. Good. Good. So, well, you're always welcome back here. Well, you know, you may see me more and more on here now, but I don't worry about, you know, all the politically correct yeah, companies. Well, that's, what you were, that's what you were worried about. That's the biggest part of it because I had a, a neighbor come to me one day. I think I told you this on the phone once. I had a neighbor come to me one day and said she saw me on GabNet and I was pretty opinionated. If she could find me on there, then, you know, I was worried that a boss or somebody, you know, a customer or somebody would hear me or, you know, it's like, you know what, I better pull away while yeah. before I get, you know, in trouble for saying something because. This this world we live in today, you got to watch what you say. So, yeah. Yeah. all over there. But anyway, I, I you know I wish I'd done that. You know I've been I've been having a lot of little regrets lately because you know I figure I'm getting towards the end of my life and I've had some issues lately that even make it look more like it's getting towards there. Uh, you look great. Well, thank you. I think I do look great. 
you know. Yeah. Gee, I don't know why he dropped dead. He looked so great, you know. <laughs> uh, um, and now I think I'm going to be okay, but, uh, you know, here's what I do. Here's what I do. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I think about some kind of health problem, you know, and then I start looking it up. Oh, I never do that. That's like the worst. And thing by the time do. I'm through, I am a mess. Yes. I'm in an absolute mess. Because you 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 or to begin with, you're only gonna look at the worst stuff. You're mm -hmm. not gonna look at the good stuff, you know. I mean, you know, there is always a chance that I don't have a problem. Okay? <laughs> Maybe about a fifty percent chance that I don't have a problem. But I'm always I'm one of these people that's always looking for the worst possible answer. And then yeah, I, I, live, look. I live with that. And yeah. I and, and this morning uh, I woke up and I went, I don't want to die. I don't, I want to go to Europe again and I want to see us land on the moon and blah, 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 blah. And I began yeah, to Mars. think, I, I don't know if we're gonna, I'm going to make it to Mars, but you know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. I don't, I, let's see here. Jeff, maybe not. Um, I, I'm, I don't think I'll see us land on Mars. Uh, Charlie probably won't see us land on Mars. Well, are, are, are they going back to the moon? You said land on the moon. They're right? going back to the moon. Supposed to get in there in 24, 20, uh, 20, 20, 20, 24 or 25. For what? Elon said, didn't it? Huh? Didn't Elon say that? Well, no, Elon has said that, and maybe a little earlier. That's the uh, NASA schedule. Oh. But NASA has a big promo they've actually got on YouTube that says, we're going back to the moon and we're going to stay. Really? Yeah. And, and that's the attitude. Boy, if I, I had known that, I would have waited to retire and gone there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I just, uh, but I, I, I just, I just think about, you know, maybe all the opportunities I missed, but then I, there were a lot of opportunities I had too. So, oh, you know, you were blessed to have a career in something you love to do. Uh, I dabbled in it, but had a career in something I didn't love to do, and yeah. and it it definitely from the minute I changed from what I loved to do to something that I was fortunate to do because I made a lot of money at it, my life changed, but, my yeah. attitude changed. Yeah. So you're blessed to have something that you love to do for so long. Yeah, yeah, Leave. you know. But now I can't put two <laughs> words together. So you know what? Well, you, know. you did pretty well. To what do we owe this pleasure? That's what I was trying to think of. Oh. <laughs> and I couldn't come up with it. But I said it a minute ago, right after you were trying to figure it out, you probably didn't hear me. Oh, no. I was trying to help you. That's fine. <laughs> fine. You can also uh, help me with a wheelchair when I need to be wheeled okay. around. Okay. I'll help you cross yeah. the street, old man. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the ability to take time out at this point in your life and have your life the way you want it to be is a blessing it's a real yeah. blessing so all the time you spent working those jobs you didn't like made you enough money that you can do this now yeah that's true you know it's it's, it's scary there's no question about it it's scary to, to pick up and move Halfway now around you, the you world. You still get your social security, can't you? Yeah. Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that check will follow you around the world. Oh yeah, just Medicare doesn't. Right. No, no. but yeah. Medicare doesn't follow you. So, mm. I'm I'm still up in the air about that because you know Part B, mm. um, is the doctor part, and they want 170 bucks a month for for that, and um, and for every year that you don't do it like for if for some reason i need to come back here yeah. i need to, to yeah. live here yeah. for every year that you don't sign up for part b that you were eligible they charge you a 10 percent per year uh penalty what's yep. that all about yeah so so that's 17 dollars a month if you think about it times if you three no, but, years but, no, you got to think you got to think about it this way Yes, you pay 170 bucks a month for your insurance. I don't know what I pay now. Might be might be the same thing. 170 bucks. Uh, it comes out of your social security. Right. Uh, but then you got to take care of that 20 percent. So then you have to go get a supplemental plan. See, that's what kills you. It's... And and that's uh, a 300, a little more than 300 dollars a month. 
You know, so when you think about it, you're paying 170, you're paying 300. What the fuck are you? Oh, and then also, you uh, have a, a deductible of uh, 400 dollars, 450 dollars. So my question is, what the fuck are we getting for our money? Right. right. I mean, why isn't Medicare 100 percent? Here it is. Take it. God the bless Republican you. Republican Party. That's why. Uh, yeah, and Democrats who aren't uh, uh, strong enough to try and do something about it. Like Manchin, you mean? Huh? Like Manchin? Like Manchin. Well, yeah. Manchin has, you know, Manchin, I think, enjoys his position. Yes. It's an ego thing now. Oh, everybody's waiting to see how I'm going to feel about this particular issue. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions. You know, yeah. I mean, he's 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 an asshole, you know, but then again, most of those people down there are assholes. Just some of them are our assholes. That's the only difference. And the only problem with Manchin is he comes from a state where coal is king and he has a lot of money in coal. And I don't I don't know that I blame him for voting for his constituency. In other words, when you get a senator or a congressman going to the going to Washington, they're there to look out for your best interest. So yeah. he's looking out for their own best interest. So I, on that in that respect, I don't blame him. Yes, uh, uh, Charlie. Well, the problem is seventy-two percent of West Virginians like the child tax credit. And he voted against it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's voting for his 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 constituency. He's voting for Joe Manchin. For ego? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Josh, uh, how are you doing tonight? He's gonna, I'm doing good. How are you doing? He's going to have a lot, a, lot, a lot of talking to do next hour. <laughs> what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to sign off the Zoom, close it down, then start it up on another machine, the one that we do the Monday show on, and then start sending it over to Facebook so people can watch it over on Facebook. And then, you know, uh, you know how to bring everybody on and everything because you I made you a host many times when we talked together. So he will just run the show, and I will go uh, do what I got to do, you know. So anyway, we don't use the same Zoom link like you have same here. Same one, same one. No more Skype. Uh, I haven't used Skype in a long time now. I thought other shows were still using uh, it. Uh, uh, Jack still uses Skype. Yeah. He can use Zoom. I've told him that he could start using Zoom uh, and and use this particular number, okay, this particular address, um, which would be very simple for him because he already uses it to call us. Right. You know, so he can just turn that on, turn my account on, and sit there and have everybody come in and do what they're going to do. Uh, so, but he hasn't been doing it because, quite frankly, to treat to teach Jack how to do anything technologically new yeah. is a long uphill curve, and uh, I don't know if it's one that I want to take. But you know, <clears throat> anyway. So, but uh, no, but we've been doing Zoom for a long time now. Uh, it's so much better than Skype. I mean, I don't even know. I, in fact, I have Skype, and I turned it on the other day, and I can't figure out how to use it anymore. <laughs> it's like, it, I, I, it, does it work the same way it's always worked, uh, uh, Alan? Yes. It yeah. does? Really? I mean, it, 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 they haven't tried to make it more like Zoom? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, free product. They'd have to invest a lot of money in it to do that. And they're not willing to do that. No. Well, no, but uh, they're having to compete against Zoom. I mean, Zoom took Skype and took them to the cleaners. Right. I mean, who uses who uses Skype for group calls now? Nobody I know. You know. Jack. Huh? Jack Bishop. Jack's well, the only one. The only reason we did yeah. it is that was our. It, it was grandfathered into GabNet, okay? And he was used to it and he knew how to do it. So it was easier for him, you know. Zoom's just as easy, but it's just a different learning curve, that's all, you know. 
and I don't want to get calls at one o'clock in the morning. I can't get this thing to turn off. You know, I mean, <laughs> but anyway, but he's in the hospital still, uh, and uh, it's supposedly he's going to be there till the twenty sixth or something like that, and then they're going to send him home. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll see what happens. You know, Medicare is only paying for another five or eight days. What, who's only paying for another five? Medicare is only paying for another like five or eight days. Oh, are they holding him there just as long as the Medicare is paying? That's yep. how it works. Oh, yep. why, why didn't they try to get him out of there faster? Oh, I guess because they wanted the money. Yeah. See, that's what I hate about it. No, but you were talking about, you were, you were talking uh, about that you were uh, unhappy with your business that you were in, Rob, and... Uh, today there was a story that I read. Uh, do you know uh, there's a broadcast organization called Odyssey? Yes. And Odyssey used to be the company that I worked for, Entercom, who owned mm -hmm. Live 105 in San Francisco. And quite frankly, I don't think Odyssey would have become a major company if it hadn't been for me, because I, I made them enough money they were able to buy two or three radio stations, you know. Um, and uh, uh, but they were Entercom, and now they're Odyssey, and they've done so badly. They you know they went on the stock market and all that. They've done so badly that they're being threatened with being delisted. They were delisted. I heard. Did they get delisted? They, yeah, they that's what I I thought I read. They were delisted. Yeah, or that they were going to get delisted, or they were within a gnat's hair of getting delisted. Whatever. So Those are the, they bought the CBS radio stations too. They bought too. all the CBS radio stations. Yeah. They went on a big buying spree. Okay, greedy. And uh, you know, never called me to say, "Well, you want to come work for us?" But you know, I mean, screw them. Anyway, is it the same management from when you worked there? Uh, David Feld. No? David Feld, the Feld family. So it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, I love that. Yeah. And I, I I met up with David. Um, I I talked to him a couple of months about a couple of years ago, and uh, no mention of hey you want to do a show for us anyway. Uh, so all of a sudden they're delisted, right? What's the first thing they do after getting after this is going down to try and right the ship? They fire three hundred people. Of course. Now, I never could understand that. Why, when it's your fault, do you fire those people? You know? I th the last thing you should ever do is fire people to, to, to write a ship like that, right? Radio isn't what radio used to be. It's just... Yeah, but, I mean, and we're talking radio here, but that goes on all the time, where in order to... A company is not doing as well as it did last year... What do you mean? Are you making a profit this year? Oh, well, we're making a profit, but not like we were last year. So we're going to have to lay 200 people off. So I read today on LinkedIn an article on what's the next two years on what's going to happen in companies who are looking to cut budgets. It's going to be in real estate and in finance. They're going to automate all finance processes and they're going to severely cut real estate. They're, the amount of money they spend in real estate, as people work from home now, they're going to reduce their footprints. And that's going to, they, they're staying away from uh, laying people off. And, and, and those two areas are going to be the two, at least that's what these couple of articles I read today say, that many companies are looking at that. That's a good thing for people. Yeah. No, I mean, but, but, but the thing is, is that, I just, I just don't like the way companies are trying to economize. I mean, to begin with, we have a, uh, I have Verizon as my carrier for phone and internet and so on. I can't get a human being anymore. Oh, isn't it brutal? The, the best way I can deal with them is on a chat. And that is like a pain in the ass. Because they don't, when you say something or you answer something, they don't answer fast enough. You know why? I, I, they, I, they're, they're doing they're, two or three at a time. Yes, it's exactly right. Because I was on the, yeah, I've been with retirement and all this stuff going on. I've been on all these chats and a guy typed something and I said, what? 
He said, "I'm sorry, that was for the wrong. That was for the, the wrong conversation." Oh. <laughs> yeah, he, he responded to something that was so. I was like, "What?" I just typed "what," and he's like, oh, "I'm sorry, I put that in the wrong chat window." I just so, don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. They're, they're doing they're bouncing around. That's why you wait so long to get an answer. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, but I mean, I'm sitting there and they go, uh, let me go look at your, uh, pull up your file. Mm. One minute, two minutes, three <laughs> minutes, four minutes. I wrote the guy back yesterday about it, four minutes. I said, uh, how f slow is it to have to pick, you know, get my, 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 uh, uh, records? And, and I didn't get an answer. Yeah. You know, and then eventually I get an answer. Oh, sorry, I was just looking at it. You know, yeah. and finally, finally, I got and all. All I wanted to get taken care of is they they started charging me five dollars a month for their cloud, and their cloud doesn't even work. Okay, it is the worst cloud I've ever had in my life. Okay, and I already have one with Dropbox, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but I, I it was just it's just five dollars a month. That's all I wanted to take off of my bill. But I, I just resented them giving me this Ver, this Verizon uh, cloud and me not getting any real use out of it, you know, and it not working particularly up to par. Uh, and that's what I was taking. Took took me I'd say forty five minutes to get the five dollars taken off my bill. All I should have said was, I want the $5 taken off my bill. Okay, let me go get your record. Here it is. Boom. Mm. You know. Your bill every month will now be. But, I mean, it's just companies just don't, there's no way to talk to anybody anymore. You know? No. The only people that I still can talk to, GoDaddy still answers their phone. I had an app on my phone I don't know where my phone is at the moment. There's an app on my phone that somebody showed me that says, and I don't remember the name of it, but it was supposedly, if you looked up a company, the phone number that they gave you was to a live person. No. I can't think of the name of the, I don't know where my phone Get is. Get Human. What is it called? Get Human? Yeah, that's it. Get Human. There Get you human. go. It works good. Oh, okay. And you can call any company and get a human being? Well, if they I, have it in their database. Yeah, it's uh, right if it's in their database. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Verizon files. Verizon. Can you look it up? Is there, oh, a, hold on now. is there a number? Not a number that I can call and get a machine. A number where I can call and get a human. No, it's a yeah. Verizon. Verizon. Yeah. Wireless. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, there's two numbers here, and it says current wait time 22 minutes to talk to a person. Oh, geez. Well, that's, that's the, the world that's the other involved. problem. They don't hire enough people to answer the phones. That's better than 22 minutes to talk to a, an app. I hate IVRs at this point. I just cannot stand every time with the music and the announcements and the music and the announcements. What company? That's the one cool thing about Apple. They they ask you when you wait. They say to you, "Would you like to listen to jazz? Would you like to listen to classic rock? Would you like to listen in silence?" Yeah, I always choose. But guess silence. what? One of their companies is Apple Music, so they have the rights to play all that music. But oh, Go, GoDaddy, when I call them, has had the same online music for the last like ten years. Yeah. In fact, you can go online and say GoDaddy wait music. And you will actually find a copy of the song they play. So that if you really miss it, you know. I just sent it to you in Facebook Messenger, Alex, at your leisure. What what? Get the human. Verizon phone number and and I think it says get human on it. It's a <laughs> it's a free app from it I got it on the iTunes store. Yeah, but it's still, know, you got to wait ago. 22 minutes. I mean, companies just should start having people. Different times, different, you know. Yeah, you, know, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you, I've been very impressed with Social <laughs> Security, you know, signing up for Social Security and, you know, just going there and dealing with these people. The wait has been pretty short, going to Social Security office, talking to the people, been extremely helpful. I was shocked. It's not like DMV. 
No. No. No, isn't that the truth? But the DMV has always been that way. When I first got my first driver's license, the DMV was that way. You know, they may have actually gotten better, to tell you the goddamn truth. Yeah, with the. And this was the, the California the DMV. It, in California, I think it's worse. It's horrible here. Well, the DMV here, let's see here. When I got my license the last time, it was pretty. It wasn't. I had a, an appointment, but they didn't exactly keep it. You know? But they were trying, you know? So. I went into the DMV two weeks ago. Did a complete title change on a trailer that I didn't own. I bought it. I was in, out, in my truck within eight minutes. Wow! Wow! I would, was, I, would, I, would, I would have just done, I would have just done a spit take, but I have all this equipment here. So. That was including checking in at the information lady at the door. Oh, really? What city? I was down here in Hollister. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Eight minutes, and I had to have have somebody meet me because they had to co-sign on it. Yeah, they had a double <laughs> signature because it was for our band. Let's see here. I just crazy. Who is Fringe Minority? So Let's see who Fringe Minority is. Oh, that's uh, that's our good friend uh, Trucker Steve. Uh, Trucker Steve. Oh. Yeah. Um, are you the Fringe Minority, uh, Trucker Steve? Yeah. <laughs> How's politics in Canada these days? Oh. Oh, Trudeau is a bonehead. And his, and his, I don't know if you've seen his new haircut. He looks like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> He's a complete tool. Yeah, well, they all are. <laughs> yep. I mean, we've got a, uh, we, if, if, if you haven't had a chance, uh, Rob, to deal or have to put up with our mayor here in New York, uh -huh. but he's a real tool. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, just amazing. He's in a nice little war with, uh, with the governor down in Texas now, isn't he? Well, yeah, yeah but you know, I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't greet those people at the, at the uh, station, you know, at the bus station. Uh, yeah, because we, you're only encouraging him. Yeah, they're just pissing on each other is what they're doing. I don't know. Send them back. Send no, them but here's what's happening. What's them. happening is it's kind of somebody who peed in Texas and kept dribbling all the way to, to New York. Pretty much. Because <laughs> they, they fill up the bus with 50 people, and by the time it gets here, there are only six on the bus. They've gotten yeah. off all along the way. You know. So. Yeah, then the governor sits in his wheelchair and says, go ahead, make my day. I mean, geez, it's such a. Such and all those tax hating Texans don't mind paying the bus fare for all these uh, immigrants. Yeah, how many of those buses is, is he doing them every day now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what, what what did New York ever do to him? Okay. Why is he. Because they're sending uh, them to Washington, D.C. Well, if you're going to send them to Washington, D.C., then you are making a statement. But if you send them to New York, what are you saying? You know? Type of statements this guy got to make. He's an the bus idiot. stations full up in DC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what he's saying. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> but anyway, our our mayor sucks, and our our governor is a a pain in the ass too. She's just terrible. But you know what? What have you? You know, we got rid of a guy who kind of pats women on the ass, and that wasn't good enough. But he did save our lives, yeah. and you know, he was a good governor. He, the one thing about Cuomo that I liked is that he did care about the people. He felt a duty to the people. He made a lot of changes. When I, you know, I've been away from New York for 15 years, and when I come back, bridges are different. I mean, the Gothels Bridge, those old rickety bridges have been replaced. Mm -hmm. Skyline looks different. Oh, the Skyline. I mean, the skyline. Well, there's a couple big buildings that are missing. Yeah, I'm missing. Well, but there have been replacements there. And, and when I left New York, there was a big hole in the ground 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, you know, Cuomo's responsible for building a lot. Yep. 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 But, I mean, it, 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 it uh, you know, it, what can I say? It, it's just uh, he was a good governor, 
and uh, he got he got I think he got screwed. You know? I think I think they were worried about him getting too much with what happened with COVID becoming too much of a, a national presence and, and a fear on the Republican side to uh, to blacklist them so that he wouldn't be a good presidential candidate. Well, here's the other reason why I, I think they they got rid of him is because and this is the other part that we could talk about that he was considered to be a bully they didn't people did not people he had to deal with did not like him but the people like me loved him because he did stuff for us he did stuff for the state he did stuff for the people so if he was a bully and a prick and an asshole he could be all those things but as long as he's my prick and my asshole have at it you know wish we had him down here in texas yeah yeah but, uh, but you know what's wrong with texas they keep voting for this goddamn you know something in the water i guess <laughs> and 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 who broke his legs to make him have to be in a wheelchair he did it to himself did he not pay the mob some money what what happened? Got ran over by a car, right? No, a tree fell on him. Oh, well, that's God he trying to say something. Isn't damage. It? A tree <laughs> fell on him. Wow. Yeah, that's that's free. He got this huge settlement, and then when he became governor, actually, he wasn't even governor yet. I think he was lieutenant governor. He, he made it so people can't get as much money as he got in his settlement. It, there is a limit. <laughs> they isn't have there? a cap on it now. No, well, like for instance, in the case with uh, what's him, Alex Jones. Yeah, uh, they got fifty thousand dollars. They're never going to see fifty thousand because the state of Texas puts a cap on it, don't they? If seventy-five thousand, I think is the cap. Uh, I think it's seven hundred fifty thousand. I think he got forty million, four million or something. Right, four, fifty no, million. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 50, fifth between several ones. Fifty million. Yeah, they're not going to see that fifty million. No, no, yeah. because uh, there's a cap on it. Yeah. Yeah. So why do they give away that kind of award if they know it's not going to stand? I don't, don't tell anybody. I don't know the law. Because, I mean, I'm sure Alex Jones, Alex Jones, while that trial was going on, and they were showing him every day on television, was making $750,000 a day. Day, poor thing. So it was a moneymaker for him. And the same thing's true of Trump. Every day since, um, uh, what, did I hear it was two million a day that he was making in donations ever since Mar-a-Lago? So today I'm driving, I'm on Long Island and I'm just running a bunch of errands. I'm on Vetter, Vets Highway here and I run across <laughs> on the left hand side of the road a guy with a tent, a white tent. And he's got American flags and Trump flags flying, and he's selling all kinds of Trump stuff, hats and all kinds. I don't know where where that money goes, but and he was there all freaking day. We can, we passed by at seven o'clock at night. Oh, he just he pockets out he pockets, there. He pockets Wasn't some he money. the guy in the news that somebody opened up with an AK forty seven tonight on him? What? I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, Trump <laughs> stuff in New York. Come on. I'm. This is this is really Republican here in really? Suffolk County, Long Island. Yeah, never yeah. been on Long Island. Yeah, been to New York, but never Long Island. Okay. Yeah, no. I just you know, I'll tell you, I just don't understand what I don't understand, and and, uh, and nobody's been able to tell me why. There are people who love Trump, oh. and I'm going. This guy's disgusting. He's fat. He you know is the world's worst comb over. He's, he, 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 he does a terrible job coloring his hair. He does, and he's a horrible public speaker. He, horrible he's a liar. Public speaker. He can't look. He just reads a teleprompter like he's having to read something in school and he's got to get through it. You know, yeah. what is it to like with this guy? What, why I, do you love him? I heard him? he went to the Justin Trudeau School of, of uh, Tactics or something. I, I mean, I don't, under, I, I don't understand the allure of Donald Trump. Now, you know, I mean, they, they like his meanness. Yeah. Mm. They like the fact that he's so mean. That's why The Apprentice is so popular. Like, why the what is so popular? This TV show, The Apprentice. 
Well, you're fired. People like that. You're fired. Yeah, but you know, that's, somebody's hopes. that's another that, that's another big myth. You know, that show was only on top for the first season. Sure. Every season after that, it 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 was losing like crazy. That's why, in its last season, the last season you saw had been in the can for two years. Mm. You know, it had been. And they thought Arnold Schwarzenegger would do better. Yeah, and he hosted for a while. Well, well, it was a good idea. I mean, you know, but but th that show had a flimsy premise. It really was not a good show as shows go. I mean, if you're going to do something that a Rob, uh, Rob Burnett, not Rob Burnett, uh, uh, the Burnett, whoever, whatever, Mark, Mark, Mark. Burnett uh, does, that is a, a good show, is Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect show, you know? Uh, and, and it works really well, but The Apprentice, I, I couldn't watch it. It just it didn't appeal to me on any level. Oh, we're going to go out and have a bake sale? Oh, good, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, it was, and and so everybody said, "Oh, he was a big TV star." What? You know, I guess we've lowered our standards on the word "star." You know, so. It's like Trump Airlines. What a joke! Yeah, you have ever had Trump steaks? No, really. Do you know anybody who ever bought Trump steaks? No. Okay, because I I can't imagine they were very good. Yeah. What's that steak? Omaha Steaks. Yeah. What a shitty company that is. Yeah. Have you ever ordered Omaha Steaks? Marjorie did once because she said she heard they were good. So she ordered them and they came here and they were like slivers of meat. Hmm. And they were tough. Probably from Mexico. They were terrible. They were huh. just terrible. So, you know. Um, you never hear the end of them either. Huh? Is, is no. New York City as as dangerous a place as it's as as it's the it, has it changed that much that it's become so dangerous? I'm mean, living in Virginia and I hear all these stories about New York. Is it hype or is it really true? Is it dangerous there? Well, I don't know. I don't go out. You <laughs> okay. Know, ever since COVID, I got very used to staying indoors. You know, uh, uh, it's gotten slightly rougher. But, uh, you know, when I first moved here uh, back in the 70s, oh, yeah, uh, it was it was, dangerous. it was really dangerous. And that kind of maybe even give it gave it an edge, that kind of air of it being uh, scary, you know, kind of was interesting mm -hmm. in its own way. Strange, you know. But I. Uh, 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 you know, I don't know that it's that dangerous. I think it's dangerous for certain people. I mean, if you're poor in the city and you live in the projects and places mm -hmm. like that, yeah. But you're hearing about like people getting, uh, you know, just a lot of people getting getting attacked or you know, all kinds of stuff going on that we're hearing about in Virginia, about Manhattan, about especially the city. You know, New York City, what, what, not necessarily. Manhattan, but the boroughs. That, well, anytime it, there's been something wrong about New York City, it, it usually is overstated, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see any of it, you know? It looks, per everything's perfectly happy out there, you know? Mm -hmm. But then again, as I said, I don't go out that much, mm -hmm. you know? I've, I've spent the last couple of door years indoors, you know, and... Um, it's gotten to the point when I try to take a walk, it's harder for me now than it used to be. I got to get my walking legs going again. But, you know, uh, it, Marjorie goes and she takes the subways and she, uh, she walks uh, sometimes a mile or two to come home just because she likes walking. And, and she doesn't face any problems. There was just something major that happened in Harlem recently that I heard about. There was a murder or something here. Yeah. Yeah. But it happens I'm, everywhere. But especially I mean, in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Come on. You know, I love it when they say, you know, it was terrible here in the Harlem there was a murder. The first year that I came here, Christmas time, there was a guy murdered right at our front door, our front gate. Wow. Well, Merry uh, Christmas. Yeah. Killed. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
it's much better than that now. There was a time when this, when Harlem was, you just didn't go out at night. Barely went out during the day. And when we first moved here, it was you still heard gunshots at night. Oh, jeez. You know, so to say, is it bad? Well, not as bad as it was. Mm. You know. Where in the Philippines are you going to move? Manila. A lot of Manila is high crime. We're going to be oh, in... I've been to Manila. You, it, is, it is a dirty city. It is? It is? It is? It is very dangerous. You don't want to drive there. Uh, me and my wife went there for a vacation to visit her family. And Manila was the first city we saw. And that's where the plane landed. Right. I had to get myself a... a it was a the dirtiest city that I saw ever seen. Okay. Yeah, it's we're really looking, like we're looking in, in a suburb of, of, of Manila, mostly because I want to be the best hospitals. Yeah. Well, the only thing I know about Van Manila, Vanilla, Manila is, uh, let's see, that's where Apocalypse Now was shot. You know. Really? Yeah. Don Holly. Yeah, they borrowed the Philippine Air Force for that. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Either. But uh, so anyway, um, how you doing, Josh? You're getting ready for your mm. your hour of uh, of Josh, and and I hope all you people will call him during that. Yeah, time. I'm good. There's plenty to talk about. You know, but if nobody wants to call, I know Josh. He can just t talk to you what? for what? a solid hour without stopping. So wasn't <laughs> Manila where they filmed Midnight Express? I don't know. You know. They used that prison, and the guy got in there, and the prisoners were. It's a long time ago. Is that the movie where they, they was they were making believe they were they were he was supposed to be in Turkey? Yes. Oh, I think there, 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 was some, there was some scenes shot from the last Jason Bourne movie. Really? I think I remember there was some shots where he was in Manila. No, Midnight Express was filmed in the Bronx, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a joke <clears throat> if you've ever been to the Bronx. So, excuse me, folks, if I'm blowing my nose, but the allergies today are up, uh, really heavy on allergies today. Close your windows. Mm. Well, I, I just do, got. I, a, I just. Windows. I just got out of surgery uh, today on my arm mm -hmm. for a fistula. So when I go into dialysis, mm. they put two needles in my arm. Mm. And finally, this just catheter that I got in my chest for over a year is going to be gone soon. Okay. That would be nice. Well, good. When's when are you getting the uh, the kidneys and stuff? Uh, I have appointments in September. Uh huh. September thirteenth, with do blood work and talk to a social worker and some other tests, and then three days later, I talk to the surgeon. Oh, really? So they, they will have one ready yeah. for you? or is uh, There might be a kidney very soon. I don't know. Well, but I don't know right. exactly when. Be, that would be and very... And you have a donor, right? There, there could be a donor. I just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it might be a family member. I don't know. They might be keeping it a secret, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, how do they match kidneys? I guess by blood type, right? Blood type, and yeah. yeah, and they do other tests on uh, on the donor too to make sure he's completely healthy or do, she. Do they have to be perfect kidneys? I mean, for instance, I have kid <coughs> my kidneys are good, but I have what they call cysts in my kidneys, or at least mm. in one of them. Would that be still be a good kidney, or you don't know? You're not a doctor. Uh, I'm not sure if it, if you're still peeing and functioning, then. Well, I'm still then, peeing. You know, uh, that 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 never stopped happening. <laughs> I know you're an old fart, Alex, but can you still get a boner? Whoa! Well, <laughs> the answer to that question is somewhat okay, because I have because, all, because they did, I, because they did I all, actually I can't since my kidney problems. Yeah, well, they did they did uh, you know when they did all this stuff on me. Uh, they they pretty well beat my prostate to a fairly well. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, the guy who did my my seeds and my radiation, I 
I, all of a sudden, I have a clear I haven't heard from the guy for like two years since I got, I got that mm -hmm. uh, thing, right? The seeds. And today, I get a call from his office. The doctor would like to see you. He hasn't seen you in a couple of years. And he'd like to see how you're doing. What out of a clear blue sky? What happened? Did he decide? Yeah, he the didn't, new Porsche. You didn't get. You yeah. didn't get enough money this month. But I said mm -hmm. sure because I wanted to go see him because I had this other situation, which I want to see if one is related to the other. And plus the fact that I said I said to her I said I am seeing my urologist and I get my PSA test through him, but I can you know I can tell the doctor you know, but I never heard from the guy again. You know, in fact, finally, I called my urologist and I said, who do I go to to get a PSA test around here? And he said, come back to me. You know, once those guys are finished with you, once they've done the big deal uh, by, by putting the seeds in and all the radiation and everything, they wash, they wipe their hands of you. So I'll, I'll take care of you. And I love, I love my urologist. I didn't think I would ever say that about a urologist, but he's really <laughs> good. But as, as for the boner question, uh, somewhat, but it's it it's it. You know, I don't even get sexual thoughts anymore. To tell you the goddamn truth, you know. Mm, well, that doesn't have down. to do with your prostate. That has to do with age. No, that no, that it was very definitely as a result of the prostate. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they went and they pretty well beat that thing to a fairly well. First, they fried it with radiation, and then they stuck a hundred uh, radioactive seeds in it. How's it, supposed to, re how's it supposed to react? Send me a thank you note? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> the, the thoughts of sex are not there. The thoughts of sex are here. The, the reaction to be able to have sex no, but is the, definitely... For instance, I would see a woman walking down the street with a nice shape, and I would immediately Ball get board. a boner without even asking for it, right? No. That, that doesn't happen anymore, you know? But... You know, I, I meant, you know, I, I, I look at it this way. It served me well for years. There you go. You know, so who am I to complain? I mean, when I was in my 20s, when a beautiful girl walked by, my dick got hard like the wind blows. I mean, shit. Yeah. No. At some of the most non-opportune times, you know, you're like, God, I got to go to the bank and go back to work. Uh, all, I, all I could think of is they say that when people were got hung, right? executed hung that they get, they got an erection what yeah uh, oh, they were ejaculated i heard ejaculated yeah yeah and i'm just wondering if, if as a noose drops and my dick just gets hard i'm thinking my last thoughts in life are oh now <laughs> where were you when i needed you pal you know so anyway hey listen what we're going to do is i'm going to sign off here I get the drill here. I'm going to sign off here. Mm -hmm. I've got to turn off my Zoom on this machine. I've got to go over to this machine and start up the Zoom and get it also going on to Facebook. So uh, give me about five minutes, and then I'll come back here and and uh, be here for uh, for Josh because he would love to talk mm -hmm. to you. So do we get back on through? I get on through GabNet. Can we still get on that way? The same way, the same. It's the same Zoom address okay. you've been using all along. You go to okay. gabnet.net and it's there. You know. Okay. So perfect. That's the, no change in the way. Just like you were calling this show. Okay. Anyway, thank you, hey, Rob. Please now, now you can call. Call a lot. Okay. Retired. Yeah, and we're and glad to see you again because you're one of my favorite people. Uh, 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 how's your dog, by the way? Um, Steve. Steve. Steve, how's oh, it he's, he's fine. He's upstairs. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. I also want to thank Josh, and I want to thank uh, Alan, and I want to thank Charlie, and I want to thank uh, Jeff, and I want to mm -hmm. thank Kevin. And uh, Josh will be two in an hour for you uh, right after we get through here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go, folks. There they mm -hmm. go. And that's exactly. it for me, and that's it for them. I'll see you again on Monday at 4 o'clock with the uh, pop-up show. You'll see that on Gab. You'll see that on, uh, you'll see that on Facebook, okay? And then I'll be back again on Wednesday, 10.30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, 
As always, if you see her, you know what to do. Of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.